From the Oakland Hills to Jack London Square, the Port of Oakland to the Coliseum, KTVU presents Talk of the Town, an engaging conversation about the people and issues important to Oakland. Hello, I'm Dave Clark, and thank you for joining me for this edition of Talk of the Town. It's really good to see you, and it's really good to be with our guest today, the Oakland Police Chief, Leron Armstrong. Chief Armstrong, first of all, just thank you for being here, and it's always good to see you. Good to be here, and good to see you, Dave. You know, one of the reasons I wanted to, to talk to you, we see you on TV all the time, often in difficult situations, and I, I've always wanted to just ask you, how are you doing in the midst of so much? <laughs> well, Dave, that's the first time someone <laughs> on TV has asked me how I'm doing. I, I'm doing good. Obviously, yeah. it's a tough job. Uh, I knew that when I took the job that it was tough. But every day I'm inspired because as a kid growing up here and growing up in West Oakland, I never thought I'd be in this position. And so I'm always humbled every day I get to come in and be the chief of police here in Oakland. And so uh, it is difficult, but a job that I'm up for and that I enjoy doing. And it's interesting to hear you say that because I've always wanted to ask you, and it, we have similar types of jobs, yeah. the things that we see and go through on a day-to-day -day basis. We don't know what we're going to face the next day. Yeah. So I said, the first thing I wanted to ask you is, how are you doing? At the end of the day, do you roll the windows down, <laughs> let the wind go through your hair? Do you <laughs> turn up the music? What do you do? Well, what I love doing is is getting home and and kind of decompressing for a minute, yeah. trying to just deal with all of the emotions that go into the job and the things that you have to deal with every day. Uh, usually my best decompression uh, is to watch a Warrior game. I'm a huge, I'm a Steph Curry fan. That's my favorite player, my favorite guy. And so uh, I'm able to sit back and actually relax when I'm watching a game and enjoying a minute of solitude, if you will, yeah, right. particularly if they win. <laughs> Particularly, uh, I noticed that you're also a talented singer and dancer <laughs> because I saw you at the Oakland Police fundraiser raising money for Special Olympics. Yeah. You performed tremendously. <laughs> I saw it with my own eyes. Well, it was really for a good cause. Yeah. Uh, I mean, my staff, they go out their way to help raise money for a great cause like Special Olympics. And they said, Chief, you have to perform. And <laughs> You have to make sure that you put on a show. And I said, let me go out here and give my best. I'm an Oakland guy. You know, Oakland is a Oakland. city full of art, yeah. you know, and, and we have a long history of dance. And so I went to McClymouth High School. And so uh, I had to make sure I didn't, you know, make our, our, our alma mater look bad. And so I just wanted to go out there and do the best I could to raise money for a good cause. You made them proud. I can <laughs> tell you this much. You know, I want to talk about a lot of different things. And I also want to touch base on some of the things that are happening <clears throat> right now. You're you're about to get a new mayor. Yeah. Oakland's about to get a, a new mayor. What are your thoughts as you plan for for the department, thinking ahead? Uh, if you could design how your interaction with the mayor will be, how would you design it? Well, I think it starts with the relationship, and I'm happy to say that each one of the candidates uh, I have a relationship with, and I feel like they are committed to public safety and trying to make Oakland a safer city. I know that is something that has been a concern of all Oaklanders about the safety of our city. And so I know that whoever ends up at the end of the day becoming the new mayor of the city, they'll be willing to work closely with me so that we can begin to make Oakland a safer place for everybody. And so I'm encouraged by that. I think we've made some strides over the last couple months to make Oakland safe with some of the initiatives that I've been pushing forward around a greater presence, more enforcement, and just trying to get into areas where people have complained about lack of yeah. officer presence. And so uh, I'm hoping that we continue to do that. The numbers in our ranks are moving up. We are finally up to over 700 officers. Mm -hmm. We want to continue to grow in both candidates who are who appear to be at the top of the list of potential mayors, they both have committed to growing the department. And so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I don't mean this as a joke. Mm -hmm. Is there any specific thing that makes you tear your hair out? <laughs> what, tear, what makes me tear my hair out is the constant uh, politicizing of crime related issues in our city. Really? It's, 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 as someone that's born and raised in Oakland, what happens in Oakland matters to me. Yeah. To have 109 homicides to date is concerning. It's what keeps me up at night. 
Um, and I just hope that we all as a city can commit to the safety of all residents of our city. Uh, that at the end of the day, it is really for me not a political issue. People's safety is really uh, a human issue. And I hope that we all can understand that, that there's a time for politics, but then there's a time for us to say, we have to make sure that this community is safe for all people. And some communities don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. And we have to do better uh, as leaders. Uh, and that includes me. We all have to come together and be able to work towards goals that make Oakland safer. Has it been easy or difficult to find leaders that you can work with, that you can speak directly and make some sense with? It's challenging, but yeah. there have been some uh, in our city. Uh, Mayor Schaff has been a good partner for me. Uh, she has been championing public safety with yeah. me. And so we, you know, have been committed to doing our best to try to bring resources to the city so that we can make it safer. There's other council members that have been right at the table as well, mm -hmm. supporting our public safety efforts. I don't think that anybody wants Oakland to be less safe. I think there's a disagreement sometimes philosophically about how we get there. Yeah. Uh, I've been in policing for over 28 years. And, and so I really believe that I understand how to lead this department and what we need to make Oakland safer. But I'm also open to different ideas and ways to do things. And so uh, it is about communication. It is about us working together to come up with solutions that help, uh, you know, solve the problem that we're dealing with, which is gun violence. And I don't know what, if anything, we could do, but I would like to, and you and I have known each other yeah. for a long time, what we could do television-wise yes. to help out uh, in, in the process and whatever, w moving that ball down the, the field. Uh, I just want to say that, and I, you know I mean that sincerely. I, I do. I think it's important to bring attention to so many families that have lost loved ones, so many people in our community who are dealing with so much trauma and pain. And one of the things I've done since becoming chief is I show up to homicide scenes because I know that these, these incidents have a tremendous impact on families and communities. And to let them know that I'm here to do everything I can to try to bring some resolve to this, whether it be finding the people responsible for it or bringing forth city resources to help people during that difficult time. And I must say, our Department of Violence Prevention has been a really good partner in us helping to serve our community. These tragedies happen far too frequently yeah and we have to figure out how we support families after they've experienced this. Yeah, I know there's more to your job than just violence, but there are people who may look at the Ron Armstrong and his job and say, it's a thankless job. Do you feel that way? Sometimes you feel that way yeah. because you face criticism no matter what you do. Yeah. I know where my heart is. I know that every day I come in to my job wanting to make Oakland safer, wanting this police department to do better. And I'm proud of the men and women of the Oakland Police Department. Working in Oakland is a tough job. Yeah. And sometimes people don't understand how tough it is. These officers are running from one call to another, one emergency to another. And they're oftentimes met with a lot of criticism. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but they still do the job. They still come in every day and they still do their best. So uh, what they do every day is something that I'm, I honor and respect and appreciate. I hope the residents of the city appreciate it because it is not an easy job. Yeah. How has your department been affected by resource uh, officers in the Oakland school system d dwindling or yeah. disappearing? It's been a challenge. Yeah. Uh, you know, with the loss of the Oakland Unified School District Police, those, ad those additional responsibilities fell on the Oakland Police Department. Yeah. We didn't get any additional resources to actually manage those issues. Yeah. Um, and so it's just another challenge for us that we have to meet and deal with. And we've been working with the district and having conversations about how we can work together better, but it really is a challenge because those additional calls, the violence that we've seen on some school campuses mm -hmm. has required the department to allocate resources to school campuses to make sure that we keep them safe. Yeah. And regardless of, again, political issues that lead to why officers aren't on school campuses. The bottom line for me is making sure that young people are safe when they go to school every day. And so if the Oakland Police Department has to leverage resources in order to do that, we'll do that. Yeah. I know you go out and you meet with people in the community. You meet with kids. Mm -hmm. What do you say to little kids? Uh, you're, you're the big police yeah. chief yeah. And, and you want to reassure and make 
them feel safe. What do you say to them? Well, I start off by saying, I'm just Laron. Yeah. A, a young man that was a, a boy just like you in, in the yeah. Oakland Unified School District and, and not sure about what it was what I, that I was going to do with my life. Uh, and people oftentimes told me stories about police and why they shouldn't like yeah. police. Um, and so I'm trying to be a different uh, role model for policing. And I hope that they see that. I hope that they see that I care. Uh, I hope that they see that I'm trying to be the change that they like to see. And then I'm encouraging them to see themselves potentially in a uniform. This is a noble job, an honorable job to protect other people, yeah. to put your life on the line. And so really encouraging young people to see it that way, to not allow other people to create the narrative yeah. of what policing is to them. Uh, and so really I hope that me being in this uniform me connecting as an Oaklander, I hope that it brings a different, uh, you know, view of what policing can look like. You used the word noble just recently, and I remember it was through the organization Noble, mm -hmm. the Black Police Officers Association, yeah. that I first met you yeah. uh, for a ceremony honoring black police officers and the work they've done, yeah. and that's important to you. It really is. Noble is a great organization. Yeah. They recently awarded me an Achievers Award about oh, two really? weeks ago. And, and, and just really an honor to be recognized for the work that you're doing in law enforcement and trying to be a leader that is uh, trying to push progressive ideas with policing. Uh, so really that organization continues to develop great leaders and I'm, I'm glad that it still exists and I'm glad that it continues to support particularly black law enforcement executives yeah. because it is a small pool of us. Yeah. But as we continue to grow across this country, I think Noble's support will continue to help us change law enforcement across America. Now when you walk through Oakland yourself, do you feel safe? <laughs> I feel safe because I'm a police officer, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, and I have other police officers yeah. with me. But but my concern is is for all Oaklanders, even my own children. I mean, I live in Oakland. I, my yeah. kids are in Oakland. And so uh, I wonder how they feel when they're out in the community. I ask them sometimes, how do you feel? And they say they don't feel safe all the time. And that concerns me. That lets me know that there's more work that I need to do, that's more work that our officers need to do in order to achieve safety. But we won't do it alone. I really rely on community to be a great partner in making Oakland safer. I think you'll do it. Talk more about mm -hmm. the men and women on your force. Do they feel like your family? Well, OPD is a family. Yeah. It is a job where we rely on one another to support each other. These are difficult times where oftentimes officers are responding to traumatic incidents yeah. uh, and they are taking that uh, that those experiences home with them as well yeah. and they're affecting them so we have to focus on their wellness as well we have to make sure that we provide them the support that they need so that they can be whole every day and good for their families and so really that's what the family is about is about caring for each other but Oakland as a city is a family and yeah. I hope that they yeah. consider the police department as a part of the Oakland family. So for many years, the police department has been ostracized and been yeah. a department that was working alone in a silo. Mm -hmm. I no longer try to do that. I really embrace community and I'm, I push my officers to be out in the community to meet with people, engage with people yeah. because we are a part of this Oakland community. And that's why I wanted to have you here. I want people to see who you really are. <laughs> the guy that I know, <laughs> a, a great guy. But I have to add, it leads mm -hmm. me to this. Do you often feel, and I, how do I say this? Um, Oakland gets slammed for some difficulties. Mm -hmm. Does it make you envious of other cities, nearby cities, other departments that, why, why always us? Yeah, it, you, it does beg the question sometimes. Yeah. I wonder yeah. why does Oakland take such a negative, you know, uh, media perception about our city, about our department. Um, and I think it's just been history and, and mm. trying to build new history. There's been mistakes made by the Oakland Police Department, no doubt about it, yeah. uh, but that's not who we are today. And I wish that people could see the men and women of this department and meet some of these young people. 70% mm -hmm. of this department has been at this department less than five years. They're not familiar with the history. They are mm -hmm. trying to build new history themselves, but we have to have community members that are open to actually embracing them and mm -hmm. welcome them and, and allowing them to be the police officers that we like to see in our communities every day. So talk about the academies. You want to build the academies, you want to recruit, 
you want people to want to be a part of yeah. the department. Is it easy to do that, to convince them? Is it easy to retain them? <laughs> it is difficult yeah. in this current climate across the country yeah. uh, to recruit police officers. And I don't think that's just in Oakland. I think all yeah. departments are dealing with that. But really our focus has been hiring locally, trying to work with our local community college like Mary College and Laney College yeah. and other community colleges that may have potential uh, candidates for police officers in their criminal justice programs or in any program within their, their particular schools. We are really going into our high schools and trying to really recruit future officers yeah. and really say to them, like, consider this great profession. Uh, we believe that there's a need to create a, a, a program that says, hey, you can be a police officer and you can police in the way in which you want to police. You can be a part of the safety mm. in your community. The ceasefire program, mm -hmm. the idea of bringing that back, how important is that to you? It's critically important. I think after the pandemic, yeah. we suffered some you know, strategy delays, if you would, yeah. uh, because we couldn't do things the way we had always done them. Uh, but now we are fully uh, implementing the strategy. We are having call-ins and bringing people who are at the highest risk of being involved in group and gang violence together and having conversations and allowing the city's resources from the Department of Violence Prevention to try to provide these young men support and say to them that there's a different way to do things uh, and giving them an opportunity to make different decisions so that they don't have to go uh, to, to prison, so that yeah. they don't have to put their lives at risk and be a victim of violence. So I'm really encouraged by that program and the partnerships that we have with our community and with our clergy. Uh, it is a really great program that has proven to be successful. Do you think your department ever needs to be overseen again? Do you think an overseer is needed for the Oakland Police Department? I believe that we've reached a point where we are beyond oversight. Now, I believe that there should always be a community oversight yeah. body because a community should know what its police department is doing. And we have that in Oakland with our, you know, with our, uh, our Oakland uh, 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 Police Commission. Yeah. Our Oakland Police Commission does a great job of working with the department, pushing the department to have progressive policies and holding us accountable. We are now in our, uh, our fifth month of sustainability uh, for hopefully our last year of federal oversight. Yeah. We hope that that comes to an end. We believe that we are fully compliant with the negotiated settlement agreement. So we look forward uh, to putting the federal oversight behind us and just allowing our community to oversee us. Yeah, I'd like to see that happen too. Can I briefly talk about your beautiful wife? <laughs> yes. And her career, she's also with Oakland Police Department. Yes, yes. Tell me about that. Well, oh, Deputy Chief Drennan Lindsay has been with the department longer than I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and she's in charge in the Criminal Investigations Division, and she's been doing that work for many years and, and really do appreciate the work that she does. Uh, she's been an investigator for many years and leading that division and continue to move that division forward. So really do appreciate the work that she does every day. Uh, I'm only the chief at the department. Not uh, at home. Not, not at home. Yeah. <laughs> we share that too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but really do appreciate the work that she does, both at work and as, and as well as at home. And, and see, I wanted to bring that out, uh, you know, again, showing that there's more to you than what we often see on TV. The importance of your wife, yeah. your family, yeah. and how it helps you keep standing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very important. Very important. My mother is, lives in this community, my sister, my cousins. I have so many friends and family members in the city of Oakland yeah. that rely on this department to provide safety. It's personal for me that Oakland is a safe city. It's a city that I spend a lot of time in, that I love waking up in every day. Um, and so it is personal for me that Oakland is a safe city. So uh, I've committed to giving everything that I have to doing my best to make this department the best department it could be, but also make Oakland a little bit safer for everybody. Chief, as we start to wind down, and I so appreciate being able to chat with you, if you were to look five years down the line, what would you like to see? Uh, something that's not a dream, but yeah. something you'd like to work towards. Well, I'd like to work towards growing this police department. We're not in need of, the, of having thousands of officers. But as a, this city continues to grow, I think this department must grow with it. Yeah. Uh, so an adequate number of police officers to make sure that every community is well served. 
but also a community component of safety to have ambassadors and others in our community yeah. to help support police and also finally be able to get beyond the mistrust that has existed for so long yeah. to for there to be a relationship where community can have confidence in this police department and believe that we're doing the right thing I, I think that's what I would like to see because I think if we reach that point then we'll all feel safer we'll feel like we're doing it together and we'll feel like together Oakland is safer, not because of just police, but because of the entire community working together. I think that's the goal. That's what I'd like to see in five years. I'm gonna drop the mic right there because <laughs> I can't add anything to that. <laughs> and I think you are the perfect person, the perfect kind of person. Uh, I, I'm biased, I'm sorry, I believe <laughs> that. A great police chief. Uh, police Chief Leron Armstrong, thank you for taking the time. I know your schedule's busy. <laughs> but I appreciate you taking the time to be here and just chatting with me and showing the people around Oakland a little bit more of who you are. So thank you very much. No, thank you for having me, Dave. Appreciate being here. Chief LaRon Armstrong, Oakland Police Chief, and I thank you for being here as well. Thank you for joining us, and I'll see you next time on Talk of the Town. <laughs>